SRO. SRO, let's go. And CDR. CDR, let's go. And launch director, NTD. Launch director, go ahead. Yes, sir. At this time, I can give you step 1126. Our launch team is ready to proceed. We are tracking no constraints. All right, copy that. I'll conduct my poll. KSC Processing, Chief Engineer, verify no constraints to launch. No constraints. Copy, thank you, Steve. KSC Shuttle, Safety Mission Assurance. KSC Safety and Mission Assurance is ready to go, Pete. Copy, thanks, Mark. KSC, Payload Launch Manager. Pete, the ISS Ground Processing team's ready to go. Copy that, thanks, Bill. Range weather. Weather has no concern for launch. Thank you, Kathy. And Ops Manager. Let's see, Pete, uh, we're looking good at Concur. We've got uh, no constraints, no issues here from the MMT. You are go to launch. Copy that. Thanks, Mike. Discovery, launch director. Discovery, go ahead, sir. Well, CJ, the vehicle's clean and the teams are go. And this time, Mother Nature is cooperating, so it looks like third time really is the charm. We wish you and your team uh, good luck and Godspeed. Thanks, Pete. On uh, behalf of the crew of Discovery, thanks to everyone who helped prepare for this mission. Let's go step up the uh, science on the International Space Station. At NTD Launch Director, you do have a go to launch Discovery. And I copy that, Launch Director. CLS is go for Orbiter Access Arm Retract. And the Orbiter Access Arm and is now being retracted away from Discovery. LMC and of course the Colbert safely into orbit. Have a great flight. Good. Those words from Orbiter Test Conductor John Craxon. The Orbiter Access Arm is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the shuttle, and it can be returned to position within seconds if necessary. T minus four minutes and counting. CLS is go for purge sequence four. The final helium purge of the three main engines is underway in preparation for main engine start. And a final test of the flight control surfaces is now being conducted. It's a pre-programmed pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of the flight control surfaces, the elevons, speed brakes, and rudder. T minus three minutes, 25 seconds and counting. Final aero surface checks are complete, and Discovery's three main engines will be gimbaled through a pre-programmed series of maneuvers as a final test before launch. External fuel cell loading is terminated, and the gaseous oxygen vent hood, or beanie cap, is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank. PLT, caution, warm memory, clear, no unexpected errors. Copy and discovery, OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow. T minus two minutes. Discovery, roger. CLS is go for EP, LH2, pressurization. Liquid hydrogen replenish on the external tank is now being terminated. The astronauts are closing their helmet visors, allowing their suits to be fully pressurized. T minus one minute and counting. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. T minus 50 seconds. Transitioning to orbital internal power. Discovery is now running off of its three onboard fuel cells. T minus 38 seconds and counting. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. CLS is go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated. And CLS is go for main engine start. We have a go for main engine start. And we have main engine start. Two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery.
celebrating its 25th birthday by racking up science and supplies to the space station. Houston now controlling the midnight ride of Rick Sterko and his crew to the International Space Station. Discovery rolling on to the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Outpost. Thirty-two seconds into the flight. The three liquid fuel main engines soon will throttle back to 72% of rated performance down in the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic. Discovery three and a half miles in altitude, four miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Standing by for the throttle up call now from Capcom Eric Bow. Discovery. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Rick Sterko, joined on the flight deck by pilot Kevin Ford, flight engineer Jose Hernandez, and Pat Forrester. Seated down on the mid deck are Danny Olivas, Christopher Fugelsang of the European Space Agency, and Nicole Stott, hitching a ride for three months on the International Space Station. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight. All of Discovery Systems performing normally, 17 miles in altitude, 18 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The onboard computers steering the shuttle for its precise path to the International Space Station. Discovery 37 miles in altitude, 54 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Three good main engines. Three good auxiliary power units. Three good fuel cells. Discovery, two engine maroon. Copy, two engine maroon. Three minutes into the flight. Everything going very well for Discovery. 47 miles in altitude, 85 miles downrange. The orbital maneuvering system engines ignited, Discovery kicking on the afterburners for 1 minute 52 seconds, assisting the shuttle and its crew on their climb to orbit. Discovery flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining a half a ton of fuel per second from the shuttle's large fuel tank. Discovery coming up on the point of negative return where the shuttle will be too far downrange, too high an altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. Discovery, negative return. Copy, Houston, negative return. Discovery speeding straight as an arrow on its night flight toward a date with the International Space Station Sunday night. Four minutes, eight seconds into the flight. Discovery 61 miles in altitude, 163 miles downrange from the Cape. All systems in great shape. More than halfway toward its preliminary orbit, Discovery's engines, fuel cells, and auxiliary power units performing as advertised. Discovery now 212 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. The environmental systems officer reports the activation of a good flash evaporator.